In this lesson, you are going to learn about the Allen & Heath SQ Series configuration and console layout. So let's just start from the top, the top left here of the soundboard, uh, all the buttons and knobs and faders and what they do, and then we'll talk about how I've personally configured this uh, in the way that I think works best for most churches and their context. So first we have this section, which is uh, always going to be there to be able to change the preamp. Uh, so if we have a channel selected and we go to our processing, uh, we can always have a channel selected and we can adjust the preamp, the high pass filter, the gate, and the compression, um, as well as the pan. And while we're not going to get uh, all the exact details of the gate, uh, we can just change the threshold and if it's in or out, but it's a good starting point and it's um, a parameter that you can just grab and adjust as you're mixing without going deeper into the menus. So um, I love that the preamp is the top left. It's the first thing that you grab and it's the first thing that you should do when you're processing an audio channel. Um, so then again, the high pass filter being next, that's another thing that uh, should be at the top of your list when you're getting a channel ready is putting a high pass filter on there and getting it in a proper spot. So after all of our preamp, high pass filter, gate and compression, on this side we have this side with our EQ. So you can uh, grab a specific band, high filter, high mid, low mid, low filter, and then you can use these knobs to adjust those things instead of touching the screen, which I think is another great option, and I found myself uh, touching the screen more than using the knobs, but having that there and so that you can be watching the band and using your ear and, and knowing that you're sweeping a frequency or that you're um, adjusting a gain up and down um, without having to touch the screen is nice. Although, if you were to use the screen for that, you can just say you want to adjust the low mid filter frequency, you can just touch that and then use this orange knob. So this knob here um, is kind of the, the catch-all. Whatever you have currently selected, it's going to adjust. So you still could touch, uh, okay, I'm going to adjust this frequency and be watching the band and listening and, and sweeping around um, without necessarily having to use your finger on the screen to do that. So we've covered this section, this section. Um, here is a fader flip button for your GEQ if you wanted to adjust a GEQ on your mains or your monitors that way. Up here we've got a eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo input, so that's super easy. Just grab an aux cable, plug in a phone, of course, if you got an iPhone, the dongle, um, or a MacBook, just anything with a headphone output you can plug in and use there. And then this is where you plug in your drive. So if you have a flash drive, uh, you can plug that in here and use that for uh, either updating the firmware or um, you could use that for pulling in presets and libraries and scenes uh, that you've curated from other places, or you can switch it to be uh, recording 32 channels or playing back 32 channels. So a um, lot you can do with the flash drive spot there. And of course we've got our headphone output here. Uh, and overall, too, I haven't said this, but I think that the build quality is really nice. As I'm touching these knobs, when I move the faders, it just feels like a, a quality build of a board. So I really appreciate that. We've got our talk button here for a talk back if you want to talk into the in-ears of the team, the worship team or the worship leader, whoever has in-ears there. Um, and then we have a lot of soft buttons. So these soft buttons can control... Um, a ton of parameters. And so you can go into the board and select. You can see here that I have this flashing light. I have my tap tempo for the delay set up for that soft button. So uh, if I was setting this up in a, in a space that was going to be frequently using it in the same way, I might take a label maker and put tap tempo or if I'm using this button to mute a certain group, um, I would use some tape so that I don't have to memorize what all the soft buttons do. Um, in a pinch, it's just nice to have those things labeled, or if someone else is mixing or babysitting the board and they need to do something, um, you don't want them pressing a bunch of buttons 
trying to figure out what they do. So uh, it is nice that they have those custom buttons, though, those user-definable keys um, really come in handy. So then um, we've covered those. Then we have our effects mixes. So as you're mixing and you want to adjust, again, it just says effects one, two, three, four. So you might want to use a label maker so that you know what those are. Um, if I go to my mixes here, I can see I have drum verb, instrument verb, vocal delay, and vocal verb. So uh, in my mix, you see channel one has uh, all these drums mixed into the drum verb. When we go to channel two, that would be our instrument verb. Nothing's in that yet. Three is going to have our vocal delay, and four is our vocal verb. So uh, I love being able to mix those on faders, and having that right up here is super handy. Anytime that you're mixing an effect, a in-ear mix, a bus, um, anything like that, uh, when you're mixing it, you can just touch it again and it goes back to the left-right mix as a default. So I think we've covered the top half of the Allen and Heath and the way that it's laid out. So we can start to move down to this section. We have our view button here. So all of these channels, if you wanted to see uh, what input they are, uh, you can press it and it'll temporarily show you that. If you press it twice, it'll show you some other information. So uh, it's a way to quickly see that. Um, and then in here, you can do some different assignments. I'm not going to get into that too deep. I want to make sure we get to the, the part of how I've got this configured for a church. Um, and then here we have the copy, paste, and reset. So this is very convenient if you want to copy and paste a channel. So as an example here, I could take acoustic one um, and then copy that. And then I could go down to an empty input. I could just choose 39 and paste that. And so now you see that we have our high pass filter, our gate, our compressor. All of those parameters were copied from my acoustic guitar and then moved to input 39. We can keep moving along down here. Uh, again, we have layers A through F. They're not labeled specifically because they can be whatever it is that you want them to be. So uh, the way that I have this set up is I have all of our inputs, 1 through 40. All of those are in numerical order so that anytime I'm making a new uh, special custom layer, I can still access any of the channels that are open or that have been built on the board. And then um, here I have all of the in-ear mixes and then our buses. So I have a bus for drums, for parallel compression drums, for instruments, and then for vocals. So these are groups of those things. Uh, everything input-wise gets routed to those. So we have our kick in through our overheads, all the drums go directly to this group. And they don't go to the master, the left-right mix. Uh, they all pass through the drums first, and then they go to the left-right mix. Same with parallel compression drums. Uh, the only difference is parallel compression drums does not have all the drum channels. It just has the shells, so the kick, snare, toms. All those are going to my parallel compression. And then again with instruments, uh, bass, guitars, keys, tracks, uh, whatever else is on stage uh, that's not a vocal or a drum is going to the instrument group so I can use a little glue compression on that as well. Then we have our vocals, of course, any vocal channel uh, outside of announcements, uh, teaching pastor, um, just the singing vocal mics are going into that group. And then after our vocals, I have my drum verb, instrument verb, vocal delay, and vocal verb send. So I don't have my returns here, I have the sends here. And then on this layer, our layer E here, I have my main left right, the sub, um, an empty matrix, nothing, nothing is in that one. And then I'm using this matrix here for the stream, for the live stream. So if you're using a bus setup where you're just mixing front of house and then having your groups go uh, into your stream so that you don't have to have someone um, separately mixing the broadcast mix, uh, that option is there. It's not the best option, but if you've only got one person to run audio for in-house and broadcast, it's definitely better to use a matrix in this way than it is to just give the left-right feed 
to the stream. Then we've got our DCAs here, and uh, I'm using that pretty much just for tracks and vocals right now, the way I have it laid out. So I can have a DCA that just controls the volume of the tracks. Uh, say I had some tracks and I have guitar tracks here at this level, but I want to send all the other tracks and synths uh, up closer to here. So instead of having to control these separately within the service, I can just have one DCA and that's going to control the, the volume of those, but keep them relative to each other. I'm also using a DCA for vocal effects. So this is both the reverb and the delay. So if you're ever going to do a reverb or delay throw, you can do them together or you can quickly mute it if the worship leader is going to start talking instead of singing and you don't want to have all of those effects going on while they're talking. Uh, it's nice to have that. You can fade it in or out or mute it as needed. And then here I'm preserving layer F for whatever I want to have on the surface that day uh, or during that service. So what you can do, and one of the things that I love about this board is being able to go into your setup and then your strip assign here, and then you can choose any input, effect, mix, DCA uh, to go onto any channel strip or fader strip. So um, here I've got the last layer. You can see that I can select the different layers here. So I'm choosing layer F and I put my drums, my parallel compression drum group, and then my drum verb. So these first three faders uh, are everything to do with drums. And then I have my instruments and then my instrument verb. So then these two I can control the layer, the level of all the instruments together as well as the reverb for all the instruments. Uh, and then, like I was talking about, I have this DCA just for the tracks volume, so I can uh, feather that in or fade it out as needed. And then I've got my vocals and my vocal effects. So we've got three, three faders for all the drums control, including their effects, two faders for the whole instrument group, uh, tracks, vocals, vocals, effects, and then here I can have my pastor handhelds, and pro presenter. So generally speaking, you can get a good mix with just these things, but say I wanted to have further control over each individual vocal, um, I can just put my vocal effects over here, and I can scroll over to my individual vocals, and I can pull them on to my surface, and now I can mix uh, the drums, parallel drums, the effects, the instruments, and then all my individual vocals. So I really can get um, a lot done with just this one layer, and I shouldn't have to switch my layers too much, but it's not too hard to do so. If I wanted to push up the kick and then get back to um, my main surface mixing uh, layer here, uh, I think it works really slick. I also love how, how fast these faders move as I'm going between layers. I think that that um, is really great. Hey, it's Jake. We'll get back to Adam's lesson in one moment, but first I want to let you know that there are more lessons just like this video within Worship Ministry School. And this lesson in particular comes from the course Mixing for Worship. Mixing for Worship is a fast track guide to sound reinforcement and advanced mixing strategies for a worship ministry context. The first module, it's all about introductory mindset and ear training concepts. The second module is about getting it right at the source how to place microphones for drums, guitars, keys, vocal microphones, a preacher, pastor microphone. We also talk about speaker alignment for your room and system tuning so that when you get behind the mixing console and you start bringing in your inputs, uh, it's going to sound great. You're starting from a good, solid baseline of a tuned system. And then we also talk about system and stage management, staying organized as a worship sound tech, making sure you have stage plots, patch sheets, production checks, checklist, cable management, and then 
in like the lesson you saw today, conducting a sound check. And then in the next module, we get to the fun stuff. We cover our mixing blueprint to help yourself, whether you're a worship pastor, worship tech team leader, or a volunteer, really learn how to dial in a professional mix for your band. And this course is going to cover all of the most popular mixing consoles out there, the X32, Behringer Wing, Allen & Heath SQ5, the PreSonus Studio Live Series consoles. So I'll put the link to Mixing for Worship down below in the description of this video. It's going to bring you to this page where you can click the buy now button, go ahead and click to enroll to get instant access for yourself and your team. All right, enough of me, back to Adam. So I've shown you how to control a channel using this top layer here, all of the faders, the layers. So let's talk a little bit more about the in-ear mixing. So you can select a mix and then your master fader for that mix becomes this master fader here and then you can select the mix. So if mix one is the drums, you can give them some drums and then quickly pull in as much as they need for all the other channels. And it works the same for the rest of the in-ears and the rest of these mixes here. So let's talk a little bit more about the configuration of the mixer. So uh, in our setup here, if I go to mixer config, you can see that I've got some stereo channels. Um, that's another great thing about this board is we can have one fader for stereo channels. That's the same thing for the wing, uh, the Waves LV1 system. A lot of boards have that capability. Uh, the X32 or the M32 does not have that capability. So um, it is nice to have that feature. So one fader here is both input one and two. I like to reserve that. Um, and then I have our kick in and kick out, but our overheads is a stereo channel. The way that that works is you go to your mixer configuration and you choose which inputs you want to be stereo. So we've got inputs one and two, and then inputs 11 and 12 for the overheads. So that's one channel. Um, some other stereo channels that we have are guitar, like the electric guitar, um, and then the keys are also stereo. So all I had to do was go into the mixer configuration and choose those to be stereo mixes. You can do the same thing for uh, the mixes as well. So we have our drums, our parallel compression drums, our instruments, our vocals, all of those are stereo mix buses that I'm using to um, create some compression, some group compression, and then also be able to use those to mix our live stream a little bit more independently than uh, just sending the left right mix. And then we have our bus configuration. So I'm choosing to use four groups so that I can have my parallel compression on the drums, the drums, the instruments, and the vocals as stereo buses. And then I have eight auxes that are available for other purposes such as in-ears. While we're in the setup menu, let's just go through it a little bit more. Um, in our audio, you can choose the USB mode to be coming out of the back of the mixer to go to a computer and send and receive channels that way. You also can select it to be the SQ drive, which is where you would put it in the front and be able to multi-track record and play back that way. Then we have our I.O. port. So you can put a different I.O. card in here. We have a Dante card in there right now so that we're able to play back and record multi-track channels. Um, you can choose the audio sync. Um, you can generate a signal so that you can ring out a room. You can configure your talk back from here, uh, where it goes. So a uh, ton of configurability within this. Ganging is another way that you can control several channels uh, with one. So if you have a couple of vocalists and um, their background vocals and they're, they're going to be the same level and you want to be able to EQ them and compress them the same, you could do all of that through a gang. So you could choose say vocals three and four, and you could pull them into this gang, and now they're gonna, uh, once you hit apply, they're gonna move with one another. You could even select the compressor and the EQ, and so any changes that you make on one of those channels will happen to both. And then um, there's just kind of some standard configuration with our network setting, being able to control it over IP. Uh, you can have different users in here. Um, again, I don't want to make this an hour-long video, so we won't get into all of that. But I do want to just finish up with um, the way that you can interact with the screen and all the menus. 
So when you press the processing tab and you select a channel, you can see both the overview and uh, individual information for different parameters. So on the left, we've got the whole channel strip and then you can select the high pass filter, the gate, if you have an insert inserted, um, this would be something that you can adjust from here. And then EQ, compression, pan. You can see everything um, in detail on the right side and make adjustments. And then see the whole channel strip on the left on the LCD screen here. And then when you get to routing, you can select a channel. And you can see everywhere that this channel is going. So you can see it's assigned to DCA1. Uh, it's not going to the mains. Um, but it is going to these mixed sends and effects sends. So I'm going to choose snare top so you can see that it's going to the reverb. But you can scroll through here and uh, quickly assign um, and then change how much it's going to each of these things. So if you know that you want to work on um, the in-ears for the snare top this way, um, you could just press the snare top, hit routing, and then choose if it's going to certain in-ears and then how much of it is going to the in-ears. It's just another way to mix the in-ears. Um, but it's great to have this overview of everywhere that the individual channel is being routed to. Again, you can send it to the drum reverb, turn it on or off. You can send it to other groups. So you can see here that it's only going to the drums and the parallel compression groups. Another overview that we have here is the meters. So on this first tab, we have our input meters uh, as well as compression. And then you can scroll through and see everything that you have and what it's coming in at. Uh, you can also see the effects. So if we had a multi-track playing, you'd see everything coming in to these different channels and how much is being sent out. So you're getting both uh, the send and the return metering. Um, all of your mixes, you can see um, how much is going to those, even what's coming in and going out of USB, and then you can adjust how you see it color-wise and even grab this RTA, tons of information. Here we have an effects tab, which is convenient, pretty standard for most soundboards, but you can go in here and choose what effects you want and be able to adjust all of the parameters of them. Here we have our scenes. I dive into this in another lesson uh, within this course, so I won't get into it too much, but you can choose different scenes from here. You can also set uh, the filters so that as you move from scene to scene, certain things don't change. We've already gone through our setup tab. Um, our utility tab is kind of um, some boring stuff, just kind of uh, how you, um, some diagnostics, the calibration, um, just how you save data, um, all those kinds of things. And then our I.O., this patching, I think, is really great. Again, this is going to be a different lesson within the course, but a quick overview uh, is I, I just want to say I think that this is a great way to set up a patching. Uh, it's very similar to Dante or Wave Sound Grid with the grid that they use, so you can very easily see where it's coming from and where it's going to and patch things. So here we have our inputs. Um, and then you can patch where it's coming from. So I currently have this set up um, to be coming in over Dante. So if we go to our Dante um, source, we can patch it. So one and two is coming from Dante channels one and two. Uh, channel three from Dante is going to kick. And then if you have an S-Link or D-Snake uh, stage box connected, you can choose to source from there or from USB. Uh, or from the local inputs on the back. And it works the same way for outputs uh, with this patching grid. And then we have tie lines, which are um, basically an additional way to do I.O. And you can send things uh, directly from the preamp uh, to another source. So this would be great for a virtual sound check or for sending it to a broadcast mix over USB or Dante. Overall, I'm really happy with the way I was able to quickly get this board configured in the way that I wanted it to be, and I was able to get a mix going very quickly on it and have it set up in a way that I think uh, is convenient to mix on. 
and I was able to get everything patched very quickly because of the way they have this grid patching set up. So I'm very happy with the mix I got. I'm very happy with the way I was able to mix on it. And I think that it's a great choice for any worship ministry to use this board. And that's how I have this board configured. And that concludes this lesson on console configuration and layout.